Hi, and welcome back to this video course, Biological Psychology, video 2.5, in which we're going to take a look at the different parts of the nervous system. Now, uh, the main division that we can make is between the peripheral nervous system that connects uh, the, the brain and the spinal cord to our body. So that's what you see here uh, it depicted in this picture. Uh, and the central nervous system, which consists of our brain and our spinal cord. Now, let's zoom in on the brain, right? Most, most psychologists and most of biological psychology has to do primarily, but certainly not only, but primarily with the brain, what goes on in our heads and to a lesser extent, what goes on to in our bodies, right? That's actually a debatable statement that I'm making right here. But I think for the purpose of this course, we can say it's best to zoom in on the brain. Uh, now, then the brain is often divided in the way that you see depicted here. We have the hindbrain or the rhombencephalon, uh, which consists of a few brain areas such as the medulla, the pons and the cerebellum. And we have the midbrain or the mesencephalon, which is the tectum, the superior colliculus, etc. And the forebrain, uh, the prosencephalon, which consists of the thalamus, various subcortical structures and the cortex or the cerebrum. Now, and the cortex is what we're going to talk about most in this course. So let's zoom in on the cortex. The cortex is where most of our cognitive high level uh, brain processing occurs, right? Which is not to say that the other parts of the brain are not important, they most certainly are. But much of what we're going to talk about will have to do with the cortex. So the cortex can also be subdivided in various ways. So here you see on the right, you see the main subdivision, which is into four lobes. So we have the occipital lobe, that's a lobe in the back of the brain, right here. And the occipital lobe is the lobe that has to do with vision. Um, and actually the occipital lobe, I would say, is the, the part of the brain that we understand reasonably well compared to our fundamental lack of understanding of many other parts of the brain. So we understand to a considerable degree how visual information is processed. And we will see that also in the perception lecture. Then we have the parietal lobe, which is kind of like uh, up here. And uh, that lobe does various things. It is also involved in vision. A lot of our brain is involved in vision and the parietal lobe is also inv involved in vision, but it's primarily involved in vision for action. So transforming vision into an, something that you do. For example, if I would look at a, uh, uh, if I have, for example, my mouse here, right? Here I have a mouse. I can see this mouse, obviously, visually. I can recognize it, that it's a mouse. But what the parietal cortex mostly do does is allow me to hup, pick up this mouse and interact with this mouse in an appropriate way. So it's vision for action. It is involved in, in touch and in general in spatial processing. So the parietal cortex is very important in all kinds of uh, spatial, spatial cognitive processes. And obviously vision for action to a very large extent is a spatial process because picking up and interacting with things is something that you do in space. Then we have the temporal lobe, which is again involved in, in vision but in a different kind of vision, namely recognition and facial recognition, etc. So again, if I take the example of a mouse, right? So the parietal lobe would allow me to pick up the mouse, but my temporal lobe would allow me to look at this mouse and see that it is a mouse, classify it as such, and tell you that hey, this is a mouse, right? So it is recognition of objects, facial processing, etc. The temporal lobe is also very important in memory and structures such as the hippocampus and the amygdala that we will talk about in the lecture on memory are located in the, in the temporal lobe. And also emotion. So emotion and memory are actually very linked, right? And you probably know that intuitively that memory, you have a lot, of, a lot of the memories that you have are not neutral, but they're accompanied by, by emotions. And the temporal lobe is also involved in hearing. Now here you see, I guess, that the temporal lobe is, is a part of the brain that has one name, but it doesn't mean that it only does one thing, right? There, it is actually a very heterogeneous structure that contains brain areas that do a wide variety of things, right? And that is actually true to all, for, all, uh, for all lobes of the brain, maybe perhaps with exception of the, of the occipital lobe, which is really quite dedicated to vision. And then finally, we have the lobe of all lobes, the frontal lobe which is involved, among other things, in motor control. And that's something that we understand reasonably well. There is a motor cortex in the, in the, in the frontal lobe that allows us to uh, uh, basically execute motor commands. Um, 
But it is also involved in a lot of cognitive processes that we don't really understand and are even very hard to label. Things like attention, working memory, and all kinds of cognitive, complex cognitive processes that are difficult to categorize and that psychologists sometimes refer to as, as executive functions. So they are the, sort of the, the complex of cognitive processes that in a sense give us our personality, right? For example, the fact that you're either a very inhibited person or a very disinhibited person is in, to some extent associated with your frontal cortex or basically all p- parts of your, 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 your personality, parts of who you are in a very complex way um, is defined in a sense by your, by your frontal cortex. Now, the frontal cortex we actually understand very little. Uh, if you saw the introductory lecture um, in which I recommended the book uh, How Intelligence Happens by John Duncan, he will talk a lot about the frontal cortex, um, explaining the few things that we actually do understand about the frontal cortex. With that, thank you very much for watching uh, this final video in the section on neurons and brain anatomy. That is part of the course uh, Biological Psychology.